Namaste Saraswati Deve Gorbani Prasharne Nirvishesha Shunyavati Haskatya Desadar Omagyana Timurandasya Gananjana Salakaya Chakso Unritam Yena Tazmai Shri Gurve Namaha Shri Chaitanya Manobhishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Pidamayam Tadati Swapidati Kam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Uta Parakamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavam Scha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raghunatam Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadutam Prajana Saitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vasakan Zitam Scha He Krishna Karna Sindo Dinavando Jagatate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostate Tapta Kanchena Gorangi Radhe Vrinda Vaneshwari Prishubhana Siddha Devi Pranamaviri Priye Pancha Kapa Trivyascha Kripa Siddhu Vivacha Patidana Bhavani Vyo Vaishnavi Vyo Namon Maha Shri Krishna Chaitanya Pranitinanda Shedwaiti Kirad Har Shiva Siddhi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Canto 5, Chapter 19, The Island of Jambudwe, text number 14. Yatai hi ka mushmika kamalampataha Yatai hi mushmika kamalampataha Sute shudare shudane shu chintayan Sute shudare shudane shu chintayan Sanketa Vidvan Kulat Levarat Dhyayad Sanketa Vidvan Kukalavirat Yastasya Yatna Shrama Eva Kevalam Yastasya Yatna Shrama Eva Kevalam Yataika Mushmika Kamalampata Yataika Mushmika Teshu Dareshu Daneshu Chintayan Sukteshu Dareshu Daneshu Chintayan Sanketa Vedvan Kulale Varatyaya Sanketa Vedvan Kulale Varatyaya Yastasya Yatna Shrama Eva Kevalam Yastasya Yatna Shrama Eva Kevalam Yatai ka mushika kamala pata Yastasya Yamnashrama 
yastasya yatna kshrama shrama eva kevalam. Materialists are generally very attached to their present bodily comforts and to the bodily comforts they expect in the future. Therefore, they are always absorbed in thoughts of their wives, children, and wealth, and are afraid of giving up their bodies, which are full of stool and urine. If a person engaged in Christian consciousness, however, is also afraid of giving up his body, what is the use of his having labored to study the Shastras? It was simply a waste of time. Namo Vishnu Vraya Krishna Prasthaya Vada Shrimati Bhakti Vranta Swami Dhanamane Namaste Sarasatum Deve Gauravani Pracharne Nirvi Shesha Shrinivadi Paskadya Deshatarne So in the Srimad Bhagavatam it is mentioned Bhakti Yoga Naman Asi No. Savai Pumsam Puro Dharmo Yatao Bhakti Raho today, a high to Kapitiya Ta Yatma Sam Prasidati. The supreme occupational duty for all men is that which is gives one unalloyed devotional service to the Lord. Such devotional service should be un Uninterrupted and unmotivated in order to completely satisfy the self. And then it says, Vasudeva Bhagavati Bhakti Yoga Priyojita Janayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayay
on the other hand, says that if we execute devotional service and even study the Vedas, and we don't come to understand that we're not this body and that we're eternally servants of Krishna and we're attached to material things, then we've actually wasted our time. It's just like the example is given. A person who has earning money every day and he's putting it in the bank, but he's putting it into the wrong bank account. So day after day, year after year, he keeps on putting money into the account. He's going to retire. He comes and asks the bank teller to give him his money so he can retire with it. And he says, well, you have nothing in the account. What do you mean every day I've been coming here and putting it into this account? Oh, I'm sorry, it's not your account. So similarly, we're putting our energies into something which is actually not helping us become spiritually conscious of our identity and ultimately of Krishna, then we're simply putting our energies in the wrong account and the result is Shrama Eva Hi Kevala, we're wasting our time. This waste of time may be very much appreciated by our society, our friendship and our love. If we ask people, you know, I've given up I've taken again to intoxication. People say, oh, that's very good. Now you become more normal. I even went to McDonald's. Oh, everything is improving in your life now. They won't say I became a vegetarian. If you tell them I became a vegetarian, I'm, I'm not having any illicit sex. I'm not gambling. I'm giving up all meat eating and intoxication, even coffee, tea, and cigarettes. They'd say, oh, abominable. What's happened to you? Who brainwashed you? <laughs> Most people will not encourage, think, oh, you've done very well. Previously, they used to take the devotees and put them into a brain, oh, what was it? Deprogramming. Now they don't even bother. <laughs> they rely upon just normal society to deprogram everyone. <laughs> society has become such that even the abnormalities that were considered abnormal previously have now become completely normal. You're expected to do it. And the social pressure is such, such that people in general, they do do it. And maybe there's a few people who don't do it, but there are they entertain everyone else, so it's not so bad. You need a few weird people in society, just to give it a little bit of variety. <laughs> but, most people are not going to achieve anything in life, and, as it says, that prayena ya pusha shabdya kalava jana Manda samanda mataya manda bhaga upadrutaha. That people in this age have but short lives. We may think our life is very long, but as I mentioned before, in one second of Brahma's life, we go through a thousand births and deaths. We live for 90 years at a time. So our one life right now, which we think is very long, is only one thousandth of a second of Lord Brahma. And if we live most of our life already, it's maybe one ten thousandth of a second of Lord Brahma. So think about how much a, a, a ten thousandth of a second means in your life. Is it even measurable? So our life is so short, people have a short lives, and they're amanda, they're slow. They're slow for spiritual realization. They're slow to understand the difference between matter and spirit. They have no interest. And even if they try to understand, it's too much for their tiny brain. Although they're imagining that their brain is so big, but the more we amplify our brain from the, in the material concept of life, 
certainly a sub sub part atomic particles, the more our brain becomes condensed in terms of spiritual life. So you take the biggest scientists and explain to them your body is changing, but you're not changing, and they look at you in the same way that any animal would look at you, with complete stare and blank, as if you're mad. That much logic they can't put together. The fact that their body is changing, and the same time that the person is aware of the body is not changing. So the most obvious thing to the self or to the soul is its eternity, but due to the influence of the illusory energy, the soul can't even understand it, the thing that's most directly experienceable by the self. So that's the power of the illusory energy. And because they can't understand that, they think any endeavor to understand the self is just a waste of time. And at the same time, one who can understand that we're eternal cell souls, then they can understand that the only value of the human form of life is the opportunity to get, become liberated. Therefore it says, Yani Sha Sarabhutanam Tasyam Jagati Samyami Yasya Jagami Bhutani Sani Sha Pashuto Mune Yani Sha Sarabhutanam Yani Sha Nisha is night. What is night for all sentient beings is the time of awakening to the self-control. And what is night for the self-control is the time of awakening for all beings. So people think we're wasting our time looking for something that doesn't exist, spiritual life. And we think they're looking for something that doesn't exist, material life. Or exists, but it's certainly not what people are actually seeking. And where does it all start? Why is it that people mad after this desire to live in the material world and try to be happy here, in spite of the fact that even they gain knowledge of the soul and the supreme soul, but still they remain attached? or Vito Bipadieta Griha Vratana. Adanta go vira vishatam to Mizram, Punat Punas Charvita Charvanana. Because everyone knows they have difficulty, everyone knows there's problems in the mature world. It's just a question of what is our solution. And there are so many solutions being promised. You take this pill and all your diseases will go away. You have this operation, you'll feel like you're 50 years younger. You put this underarm deodorant underneath your arm, and all the ladies will come falling at your feet. Oh, great soul, how can I serve you? <laughs> so, there's so many promises being made. Either individually, people are trying to improve their existence or collectively by holding conferences or organizations like the United Nations or by a combination of both, people are trying to solve the problems of material existence. But what do they think the problem is? The problem is that they don't think their body is adequate in some way. They want to improve their family. They want to improve their community or their nation or all humanity. And how is that, what is that improvement? Well, first of all, the improvement is all based on the bodily concept of life. We may expand it and think we're expanding, but we probably said if you have zero, and you keep on adding more zeros to it, you still get zero. So we may expand our idea of who we're serving in this world, and we may take great pride that we become a philanthropist or a humanitarian, but no matter how much we expand, it still winds up to be still in the bodily concept of life. And what is the bodily concept of life? It is a dime to go beer. Whatever the senses dictate, then we must fulfill. A dime to go beer, vishutam to misram. It doesn't matter if it's completely against Shastra and the laws of nature, even if it brings us to hell. It's our duty to serve our senses. 
punat punas charuta charunana. And therefore they wind up chewing the chew. So as long as one remains attached to gratification of the senses, as long as one thinks that by some material arrangement we can actually become satisfied, then one has to go on madly chewing the chew. Now maybe, kudura, psychophysical nature, some material arrangement has to be there. Bhagavatam doesn't declare or de deride some uh, arrangements for material happiness or material sense verification or material maintenance because if we can have some stable situation, we get the proper food, we get the proper ability to take rest, even to reproduce or defend ourselves, then our minds will become more peaceful and we can actually engage in Krishna service. But without engaging in Krishna service, in spite of all the arrangements, without focusing our mind upon Krishna, without trying to make some improvement to our material existence, then we can't actually obtain, well, the idea is that in material existence people think, if I can improve my family life, if I, my house gets bigger, if my family gets bigger, if we get more money in the bank, our car gets newer, whatever, then I can find peace and satisfaction. So this is called illusion. And the more one endeavors like that, then the more one will forget one's actual purpose of life. We can't, at the same time, head for west and expect to wind up in the east. We can't strive for material improvement, at the same time strive for spiritual improvement. Although some material arrangement has to be made, but the idea that we can endlessly improve materially and that will solve our problems, that's called an illusion. So we have to establish what's necessary to exist and at the same time try to make spiritual advancement in the midst of our struggle for material existence. Then the result should be jnana and vairagya. There should be vairagya. There should be some detachment. Not that I've given up my endeavor to get a bigger house and a bigger car and a bigger, you know, better husband or wife, and more children, more money in the bank, whatever. And although I've given out that endeavor, that's all I think about. That's my whole meditation. So that kind of renunciation is falgurat vairagya, or as Krishna says. Ita Certainly deludes himself and is called a pretender. One who restrains the senses and organs of the action on sense gratification, but whose mind dwells on sense objects, certainly deludes himself and is called a pretender. On the other hand, let's see. Karmendriyani samyam ya ya ste manasasmaran indriyartha vimudatma mityatras uchite. One who restrains the organs of action but his mind dwells on the sense object certainly deludes himself and is called a pretender. In other words, we may externally try to pretend for some time that we're a great devotee, but at the same time we're constantly thinking of the sense objects. So therefore, therefore, ashrams, so that one can choose the appropriate ashram. But in the midst of, say, Grihastha ashram, it doesn't mean that now I'm a Grihastha ashram and therefore I can live like a Grihamedi rather than a Grihastha. One has to follow the principles of Grihastha ashram. And if there are still demands of the senses, one has to learn tolerance. Otherwise, it is not that if I fulfill the demands of my senses, they'll become satisfied and there won't be any more demands. No, there will be more demands, and then more demands, and then one will simply become caught up in fulfilling unlimited demands. 
It is not that rich people have no demands. Their senses become pacified and purified, and they live peaceful lives. No, they just want more and more and more. And if they, they may have a billion dollars, but they see you have a ten dollars, they're envious of your ten dollars. Why does this man have ten dollars? I must take it from him. <laughs> so that's the nature of material illusion. On the other hand, a devotee, understanding how Krishnas are making all the arrangements necessary, he's satisfied in any circumstance if one can actually remain in Krishna consciousness. Or actually trying to become conscious of Krishna, then Vishavati Vardhante Nirahasi Dehina Rasta Vardam Rasopyasya Bram Drishva Nivardate. Person may be restricted from sense objects, though the sense objects remains. But here it says that Vishaya Vinivartante Niraharasi Dehina. But ceasing such engagements by experiencing a higher taste one becomes fixed in consciousness. So if we can actually think about Krishna and experience Krishna consciousness, then our senses and mind will actually become purified and we won't feel this urges to gratify them. We'll become actually peaceful. And not only peaceful, but ultimately one will become ecstatic. One will feel, experience a higher taste so that material existence seems tuchava or insignificant. Tyatva Tornama Shesha Mandala Pati Shrainim Sadatu Chava Putva Dina Ganesha Kokarunaya Kopi Nakanta Shita Kopi Baba Samrita Dilari Kolo the Mogna Mohor Pande Rupa Sanatana Ragu Yago Shi Viva Gopala Go so the six Goswamis, Jatva Toranam, Ashesha Mandalapati, they were great personalities in the government of Nawab Hussein Shah. They were fabulously wealthy with a boatload, Rupa Goswami had a boatload of gold coins. And at the same time, Sanatana Goswami was a minister, Raghunath Das Goswami, his uncle and father were multi-millionaires. But they gave it all up, and they went to Vrindavan, and they lived like ordinary mendicants, begging from door to door. Probably gives the example of C.R. Das in India. C.R. Das was a magistrate, and he was earning 50,000 rupees per month. So 50,000 rupees at that time was a thousand times more than it is now. He was fabulously wealthy, but he was unhappy because he was not satisfied with his sense gratification, even after earning so much money. So he wanted to renounce. One time he was sitting there on his porch and seeing some mendicant walk by, and his wife asked him, what would you like? So he said, that's what I'd like. I'd like to become a mendicant. After some time, he joined Gandhi's movement, and Gandhi told him, he at that time, not only Gandhi, Gandhi told everyone, you have to give up all connection with the British administrative system, including you can't act as a barrister anymore. Not acting as a barrister meant he had, to, he had to give up his income. He already distributed his income in charity, to the, especially to the Gandhi movement, and now he had to get up, give up the source of his, move, his income. So he became a man, he became part of Gandhi's movement, he was getting like something like 500 rupees a month instead of 50,000. So he became so disturbed due to his poverty that he gave up his body in a few months. On the other hand, the six Goswamis were fabulously wealthy. They gave up everything, went to Vrindavan, they were wearing lawn cloths and begging from door to door. But what is the difference? They were so much enriched with the gopi's feelings of separation that they felt transcendental pleasure at every moment. Similarly, it said in the Krishna book, that when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Krishna himself, was at Jagannath Puri, he was in the role of Shamati Rarani, feeling separation from Krishna. So probably writes 
that those who are in the disciples of succession of the Madhva Gaudiya Sampradaya should always feel the separation of Krishna, worship his transcendental form, discuss his transcendental teachings, his entourage, that the, the spiritual masses who enrich the devotees to the highest devotion perfection, feel a constant separation from Krishna while engaged in devotional service is the perfection of Krishna consciousness. If we practice Krishna consciousness every day, sincerely and follow the principles, and try to understand what the goal is, and not become disturbed by our lack of material opportunities, then the result is that we should make spiritual advancement and gradually we'll become, just like the six Goswamis, we'll become detached from our material existence and we'll take, happy, take pleasure and happiness in our remembrance of Krishna. And how do they do it? Sankhya Purvaka Namagana Nativi Kolola Sanikrito Nidra Hara Vihara Kadi Vijito Sankhyanka Chino Chayo Radha Krishna Padara Vinda Vajanan Nandina Matva Diko Pande Rupa Sanatana Raghu Yago Shri Jiva Gopala Go so they did it by chanting their rounds every day. Sankhya Purvaka Namagana Nati B. And offering obeisances, worshiping the deities, taking prasad. They did it by regulated devotional service. And they became so much enriched with the, that uh, they were constantly feeling separation from Radha and Krishna. Sankhya Purvaka Namagana Nati B. Kolola Sankriti No Kto. Nidrahara, they, in that way they gradually get, reduced their eating and sleeping and they became enchanted with wonderful pastimes of Radha and Krishna. So we don't have to artificially give up our eating and sleeping, we should regulate them. At the same time, here enchanted by Krishna in such a way is that gradually you become enchanted by this wonderful pastimes of Radha and Krishna and their associates, Shaitanya Mahaprabhu's pastimes, and in that way, develop a higher taste, realize our real self, and not become disturbed by material existence. So I'll stop there. Thank you. Any questions? Comments?